our next school that up today is St. Andrews International School, Bangkok. St. Andrews International School Bangkok is one of 73 schools in the Nord Anglia education family. They offer a British educational curriculum with an international perspective that begins in nursery and leads up to IGCSE examinations in year 11 and culminates with the International Baccalaureate Diploma after completing year 13. They are an inclusive school that invites children from all backgrounds and abilities to participate in the educational offerings on their diverse campus. And I am happy to have with me, Mr. Bartek Moskwa. How are you, sir? Hi, nice to see you again. Okay, excellent. I, I, sorry, you guys are a little small back there for me. Yeah. But I, I <laughs> just wanted to make sure that I, that I could see in here. Yeah, you. I'm also here with uh, William Taylor, who will be speaking uh, soon as well about our IB program and, and uh, any other questions that you might uh, stumble onto during our conversation today. Fantastic. And I want to remind everyone, you know, we still have quite a few people in the room today. If you are on Facebook or you are on YouTube right now and you do have an, uh, a question for St. Andrews, please put it in the chat there. We're happy to answer them live um, and, uh, you know, get the, in, you know, get the inside scoop, so to speak, from, you know, the people who are working there. Uh, Mr. Bartek, let me ask you, as I have with everybody else, you know, it's easy to read the blurb about St. Andrews, <laughs> Bangkok. But why don't you tell us, your, from your perspective, what does it mean to be on the campus? What does it mean to be a part of this school? Uh, well, first, uh, I, I'd like to update uh, some of the some of the information you, you provided, maybe since the last time we had a chance to talk. So now we, we actually have 81 schools around the world. Uh, not, not that it makes a big difference between 73 and 8, 81, but um, I also wanted to let families know, you know they, they probably know St. Andrews. We've been here uh, in Bangkok for 25 years. Uh, our original campus is now our primary school. That's on Sukhavit 71. Uh, so uh, if, you've, you've, if you've been down that area, uh, that is now uh, children from age two until age 11 uh, are now in that campus. And in 2017, we moved to where Mr. Will and I are at the moment, which is the secondary campus. We call it our high school. Uh, and uh, surely if you've been on the BTS SkyTrain, you would have seen uh, our campus when you're going between Ekamai and Prakanong stations. Uh, so this is now home to students from year seven until year 13. So obviously that was a big, big step for us in, in 2017, really the school doubled in size in terms of number of students. We're now uh, one of the bigger schools here in, in Thailand, international schools, I think the second biggest international school. Uh, but I, I, I really, I came here six years ago. I, I, I still feel like we have a small school feel. Uh, a lot of the same um, school leaders that have been here, uh, uh, Mr. Will has been here for 15 years, but our head of school has been here for over 20. Uh, so uh, our head of high school is around the same and, and uh, also at our, at our primary school. So they really were here when we were uh, really just a very small community school. And uh, for us, I, that's something that was really important that when we, when we grew and uh, in, in doubled in size uh, in the last five years, we wanted to retain that that community school feel where uh, you know parents do feel that they're, they're part of a, a community. Um, it's a very stable community in terms of that the leadership. Uh, everyone on the senior leadership team has been here for for anywhere between twelve to twenty years, uh, and uh, I think we we benefit as well from a change in ownership in the school uh, that happened in. in, in many number of years ago, where Norda Anglia education is, um, that helps us to manage the, the school. And uh, that, that's why we say we're part of 81 schools, because it's something that the children do get a chance to benefit from. Um, and that happens through uh, some of the wonderful collaborations we have. So uh, those collaborations include uh, MIT. Uh, so that's something that we get some, some great uh, Visits from uh, some of the MIT professionals and uh, also Juilliard, which supports our music and our dance and, um, uh, sorry, m music. <laughs> trying to think of this, not art, sorry. Uh, well, I'll, I'll get back the to it in a moment. The performing, they, the performing arts. Yeah, it's basically performing arts. And so uh, when they come, and uh, drama, sorry. Of course, I didn't want to leave out drama. We just had a big performance uh, last week. So uh, Juilliard comes to visit us. Uh, they think they really help us with recruiting some very, very strong teachers and with, with, with all schools would agree that uh, the mark of a great school are, are the teachers who are actually working with, with the children. I think that 
uh, being a part of Nord Anglia really helps us to recruit some some strong uh, uh, and teachers who share the same vision of about St. Andrews. We're, we're very much an inclusive school, as you mentioned uh, in, in the blurb that we uh, that we provided for you. And it, it, it's something that's very important to us. We want to be able to uh, work with students of all abilities. And so you know, we have families who come to visit us and they may have some children who have uh, strengths in different areas. And in other areas, they might need lots of support. And at the school, that's something that now being one of the bigger schools, we can provide that uh, support for students in, in many different areas, whether it's uh, obviously language support, but if there's any learning needs that need to uh, support, we have that in place as, as well. Could you uh, maybe dive a little, maybe dive a little deeper? Cause we actually have someone, uh, Kanitha is asking if you, if she, you can tell her about um, learning support opportunities for her child, if they fall behind. Of course. Yeah. So we have uh, a few different streams. So we have a high needs program in the primary school that we call the stars program. Uh, and when they move into high school, it's an embracing differences program. And so this allows us to cater to the students with the highest uh, levels of need. Uh, and it allows us to bring in expertise, uh, whether it's learning specialists or therapists uh, that work alongside the children who would benefit most from, from this support. But it also allows us then to, for these same individuals, to support other students who may be finding some areas of learning a little bit more of a challenge. They need a little bit more support, or in some cases maybe there was some learning issues that were previously undiagnosed and it's something that we have our expertise within the school that can help to support those children. And it's not something where we would ask the child then to go to an external provider. We're very happy to work alongside families who have children who might require some additional support. Um, so having those experts within the school allows us to support children of the highest needs, but actually it, it's, children of any needs within, the, you know, from, from just maybe they're finding some areas a little bit more challenging in a, in a maths uh, lesson, for example, we might have some pull out support for students uh, who just need a little bit of a boost. And, and that also works for the after school program. So there's a lot of academic uh, after school programs that help support children uh, who might need that, that extra, extra support. And of course, all the other fun stuff that they get to do in terms of sport and art and music, uh, technology. Uh, our after school program is also very much uh, inclusive. So it means that we have multiple, multiple teams in, in sports specifically uh, for children who are already experienced in that area and they just want to make friends and, and, and continue to develop their interests. And also if they're new to a sport, they'll come to join that sport as well. It's something that's really important to us that children get those opportunities uh, and, and they'll find other children who are at that same level of interest and maybe that same uh, experience and they'll enjoy, they'll learn and they'll have a, a great experience in, in school and hopefully find some things that they're very, very passionate about, which eventually when they get to the final four years of school and they're uh, choosing their IGCSC options, uh, they will know what really drives them or what, what really, where their passion lies rather than making blind choices about, well, maybe, maybe I'll like to do dance. Well, we offer dance as an IGCSE, and if children have been with us for a long time, they would have had plenty of opportunities for dance within the curriculum, but then, of course, after school as well. Uh, maybe mm. they would have joined the dance team uh, as an example. Uh, and, of course, the, uh, the other academic subjects, that maybe they would have had a chance to extend themselves beyond just their curriculum time throughout um, the primary school and, and even through... Uh, uh, key stage three. And then, of course, once they get to IB, which uh, uh, we, we have our IB expert here today, uh, we can talk a little bit more about that. Hopefully by then they will feel quite confident about the the direction that that, that they'd like to to go, it, certainly at St. Andrews and then, and then beyond when they're looking at placements at uh, universities around the world. Fantastic. Gentlemen, it's amazing. Um, I, I, I apologize to say that our time has gone by so quickly here. Um, but I want to move on to your video presentation and then we'll come back and we will speak with um, Mr. William Taylor about the IB program and those choices as well. All right. Thank you.
The International Baccalaureate Diploma was, was an easy choice for St Andrews when we were deciding what our pre-university qualification should be. It offers such a diversity in the programme students can follow that really allows every student the, the chance to, to find something that's exactly right for them as an individual. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go after school, so I felt like IB was a better choice and course to do because it was more broad. I am someone who likes studying a lot of things. I don't like studying one particular subject. IB off offers you to do extended essays, IAs, TOK, which is a completely new subject for me. So these things I thought would be very beneficial when I go to university. I do believe that when it comes to school, it's not just about academics and studying and making sure you get all those grades, but it's also about caring for yourself and your community. So I really enjoyed the idea that IB offers that. Learning an IB subject is a student-led process that's about much more than just acquiring knowledge. <music> Students explore each subject using communication, collaboration, research and thinking skills with the support of their teachers to direct and guide the way. To be a good learner, you should have the ability to question everything you study. Knowing how you learn something can help you change the way you learn something. It's a very diverse course because you have to take language, arts, science and maths. And with that, even if the career path you choose will use only one of those areas, you still have knowledge of the other areas as well. It gives you the option to choose subjects and subject choices and topics that you are more passionate about. Sometimes it doesn't feel like work because you just, you're just enjoying it and it's almost like a hobby. Structure in a way where it makes students independent. You set goals with your coordinator for yourself. When you meet them, you target your goals even higher and throughout the year you get a feeling of achievement and success. We encourage students to be the best they can be and we know that for, for some students that means getting the top grades and for other students it might just mean passing in a qualification or even just um, attending well and, and doing their best. Something that I really enjoy is getting feedback from teachers. It's good to know where you're going wrong, where you're going right and just for reassurance and knowing that you're on the right track. If I keep thinking about work, I lose the opportunity to creatively think. So I'd make sure that I try to get rid of as much work as I can right at the start and leave a couple hours in a day just to relax and think about things I enjoy. They don't just focus on our academics, but when they see some of us stressed, they'll ask, hey, are you okay? The fact that someone just is concerned for you is already like, wow, I think I can do this. It's motivation. All of our students benefit from the supportive environment we offer at St Andrews and the IB Diploma complements this perfectly by providing our graduates with an internationally recognised qualification that's highly regarded by universities. It will probably be the hardest thing that you've done up to now but I believe that by the end of it you'll learn so much from it and be more sure about what you want to do in life. The whole school is behind me and with that motivation and determination I can really just get out there and do what I can, do my best and like give 100%. Fantastic. Now we're back and I think now I have to switch our, our overlay. So now we're focusing on Mr. William Taylor here, who's going to talk us through about the choices in the diploma program. Uh, over to you, Mr. William. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Yes, I'm going to talk about uh, choice in the IB diploma program. Um, so to start off with, just to make sure everybody understands some key background, in the IB Diploma, students will choose six subjects in total, um, but will select usually three of those to study at greater depth. And that means in their diploma, they'll have one area of focus, which for some students might be science and maths, but they'll continue to study other subjects in other subject areas, such as languages, so they continue developing their communication skills and maybe humanities subjects so they um, continue to understand the way individuals and societies act um, and interact um, in the world. Um, so that background's quite, quite important. What I'd really like to talk about over the next few minutes 
um, are a couple of things related to choice that I think make us at St Andrews stand out amongst the crowd, things that, that we're really proud of. Um, so the first of those is our approach to subject selection in the diploma. Um, now, some schools I know um, will limit options um, for students to choose based on their previous grades or whether they've studied a particular subject before. Um, and we know that prior attainment, it is a good indicator of future success, but we also know from many years of experience that a student's passion for a subject, their interest and their drive to do well is just, a good, uh, just as good a predictor for success. Um, so for us, we allow students to choose their own subjects, even if maybe their previous grades haven't been as high as they might like. Um, if we have a student in that situation um, and they choose that subject, then we will obviously make sure that we provide additional support so that whatever choice they make, they've still got a pathway to be successful. Um, now, the main students that probably benefit from this are students who might be joining our school at the start of the diploma program, maybe from a different school, a different part of the world, um, from a different program. So they might not have previously studied that subject. We don't want to close the door for them. We know if they've got a passion for that subject that they can do well, and we want to be the school that gives them that opportunity. Other students that really benefit, I think, from this approach are students who've maybe transferred into us over the last few years, again, maybe from a different school or a different program. They may have moved around the world quite a lot. Their education might have been disrupted. That might mean their grades are a bit lower, but it doesn't mean they're any less capable of being successful by the end of a program. And again, we want to give them the opportunity. We'll let them choose that subject and then we'll make sure we support them. Uh, in any way that's necessary. Now, what that results in, that is something I'm really proud of, and I think we're all proud of here, is classes full of students who are happy. They're happy because they've chosen their subjects, and when they're happy, they'll put effort in, and that effort is gonna lead to success. So that's really, that's what we're about, and that's what it looks like. Now, we know occasionally that with a system like this, a student may still struggle to succeed, despite all of the additional support that we put in. Um, and I've heard some people argue that that means we should maybe have not let that student take that subject in the first place. Um, but really, having worked with those students, knowing those students, I can say that that's absolutely wrong. We might have a student who at the end of the program realizes that actually the direction they want to take in their education is to shift focus from some subjects to different subjects but they've made that decision for themselves. They've made that decision based on their experience of being given the chance and given the support and nobody stopped them. So we know if that student does choose a different pathway for the university studies, um, then they've done that, they're happy about it. They're never gonna look back and say, I wasn't given a chance. And because they've been studying the IB diploma, They've been studying six subjects and they've got plenty of other areas that they can shift their direction into. Um, so that's one of the things that, that I think really um, that makes us special, that really defines the way that we work with students and we put students first. Um, a second thing that I'd like to talk about in relation to choice in the diploma programme is about um, a new subject that we'll be offering at St Andrews from August. Um, now, already we offer one of the widest selection of subject um, combinations in Bangkok, um, but with a subject that we'll be introducing in August, that's going to increase significantly. Now, a little bit more background for everyone. The six subjects that students choose, they need to satisfy certain criteria. So two of those subjects need to be language subjects, and then students choose a humanities, a science, a maths, and then a sixth subject, which is either an arts subject or could be a second science or humanities. So some students will choose a completely balanced diploma, including an arts subject, science, humanities, and the rest. Some students might choose to double up on the sciences or double up on the humanities and have a more focused diploma like that. Now from August, we're introducing a new subject uh, which is brand new to the IB, um, called Language and Culture. 
And language and culture um, is a study of the way language helps to define uh, different cultures um, and the way language is treated differently in different cultural contexts. Um, now, it's, it's not a study of any particular language or culture. Um, students don't need to be able to speak um, any of the languages and cultures, uh, languages from the cultures that they're studying, and it's delivered, um, taught and learned in English. Now, it's a really fascinating subject in its own right, and we've got quite a few students very excited to take it starting in August. But as well as it being a fascinating subject in its own right, we've got another group of students who are very excited about this new option because it actually increases the combinations of subjects available. Now, the reason for that is that it qualifies as both a language subject and the humanities subject, because it's a study of both language and culture. Now, what that means is it satisfies some of the requirements for subject selection, um, in fact, satisfies language and humanities at the same time, which gives students one extra free choice for their subjects. So because of this new subject, it opens up possibilities, including students being able to take three sciences as a part of their diploma, which is something that was never available anywhere in the world before this new subject was introduced. Our students might now be able to take um, two sciences and an arts, or, or two humanities and an arts. Um, so as well as the students choosing it simply because it's interesting, we've also got students choosing it because it allows them to now take a diploma with three sciences, and that would look something like students choosing uh, English or a different first language, and then they take the language and culture course, and then three sciences and maths, and that would be their six subjects. So we've got students choosing um, English, language and culture, maths, and then biology, chemistry, physics, and those might be students who are aspiring medics. We've got students choosing physics, chemistry, and design technology who might be looking towards engineering as a pathway. Um, and we've also got students taking the option to do maybe physics, design technology, and visual arts, and they might be some of our aspiring architects. So there's a huge number of combinations that suddenly become available with this new subject that we're very excited because it just means that our students have got more choice because we're able to offer the extra flexibility. Um, so this subject is now going to be available from August. It's the very first year it's available anywhere in the world. Um, it's only available in a small number of schools. There's less than 30 schools around the world who are able to offer this course. We're really lucky to have been selected to be one of those schools that will offer it and will be the only, uh, only those small number of schools will be offering it for the next four years. So we're, um, we're, we're over the moon at the opportunities that we can offer our students as a result of this. Fantastic. Thank you for that introduction. I really appreciate you putting that new program on the table there. We have a couple of questions for you both, uh, in, in, and I'd like to use those as our opportunity to wrap up this. But continuing on the IB, um, does a student have to do the IB or can they choose a different pathway other than the IB? So at St. Andrews, um, the majority of our students choose the IB diploma. Um, we, we promote that with students, most because of all the programs that we have on offer. That's the one that uh, opens the most number of doors uh, to university and careers and wherever a student may want to go on to. But we do offer other programs at St. Andrews. We offer um, students to choose a combination of IB subjects and BTEC subjects. We're actually a, a candidate school at the moment for the IB career-related program. So um, we will probably be offering that from August as well as another expansion in our programs. Um, and then we also have our programs um, for students with additional learning needs. Um, Bartek spoke earlier about our Embracing Differences program and our students within that program um, can follow a very bespoke um, program that will not include any IB subjects, um, but will still allow students to graduate from, uh, from St. Andrews at the same time as everybody else on the same stage, having uh, worked just as hard. Thank you.
Ms. Bartek, um, last question is for you. And this is a question from a woman named Nada Hamaruchi. And she's asking, she'd like to ask about school community as she saw mostly Thai students in the video. Could you talk a little bit about the diversity on your community? Sure. So we have, uh, we, we don't have, uh, we have about 63 nationalities uh, the last time I checked within the school and it, about 45% Thai families within the school, so it is quite a nice mix uh, in, in in general within within our community. Although we don't, uh, you know, we don't have a fixed quota of of nationalities within the school. Um, I think our top five nationalities are are well, of course, Thai, uh, British, Indian, American, Japanese. I think are our top five uh, nationalities. But of course, with sixty three different nationalities, it's going to be a small percentage of a lot of different countries. I think in any one year group, you'll always find 35 to 40 different uh, na nationalities. Uh, we, we, we love our long-term families. I think it's always really nice. That's how we build our community by even our international families are ones who are here uh, oftentimes for the, the long haul. And it means that you know we, they, the children, uh, the friends that they make are friends that they'll get to keep for for quite a long time. And then of course, living in Bangkok, there's always going to be some of the families that are here for three, four years and part of a diplomatic mission or, or maybe here placed by multinational companies. So there's always going to be a small percentage uh, of, of families who are uh, here just uh, for, for, that, for that shorter time. Our teachers, uh, generally of course, from the UK um, and uh, of course, in the foreign languages that we offer, we, we would have the native speakers uh, from, from those countries. Fantastic. Mr. Bartek, Mr. William, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to speak with us today. Really appreciate it. We will direct any other questions to you and I wish you the best for your rest of your day. Thanks very much. Thank you.